I have with me Mr. Gopal Subramaniam, former Solicitor General and Senior Advocate in the Supreme Court of India. Mr. Subramaniam, you've written a letter to the Chief Justice of India urging him to, to not consider you in the panel of judges that are to be decided. Why? Well, I was invited to be a judge of the Supreme Court by the Chief Justice of India on the 2nd of May 2014. Um, I took about 48 hours to consider whether to accept the office or not. Uh, I decided to accept the office uh, because I think uh, I felt that there was some contribution which I could make in terms of judgment writing and also in, the, uh, in terms of institutional support which the Supreme Court needed. But now you've taken the unusual step. Yes, I have. And I underline the fact unusual, the unusual step of asking him not to consider you. No, I have withdrawn my withdrawn, consent. Right. Uh, uh, there, there are a few reasons for this. Um, when I actually accepted the office, uh, I thought this was a wave of honor, a wave of recognition, but it's also a wave of honor. It's a very prestigious appointment. And after all, I'm also setting a standard by which members of the bar would be willing to give up, shall we say, a lucrative practice to be able to come and sit on the bench. Um, we have uh, instances like uh, Jonathan Sumption in the United Kingdom, people who have had outstanding practice who have come and sit on the bench. So uh, I, I felt very happy initially. Um, when the government changed, uh, I, I had absolutely no reason to believe nor did I forecast or anticipate that there would be any objection to my name or anything of the kind. I really must tell you that, quite honestly. I have not crossed paths with people. I have not really gone about making enemies of people. So I really uh, thought in the normal course of things that nothing would go wrong. Uh, the first time I actually understood that something is going amiss is when I saw the Economic Times article on the on the on the eleventh, the next morning I saw the the article in the Hindu, the Times of India, and so on and so forth. Um, then I realised that something is wrong. So you were surprised. I was very surprised. I was very surprised, and I wondered that uh, uh, the appointing authority is, of course, the president of India, but the primary authority to make a recommendation is uh, is the collegium. But to use expressions about someone recommended by the collegium, the government has rejected. The government has decided, you know, the words which were used in these media articles, uh, they contained an element of pugnacity, which was a little, which was a little worrisome to me. Why do you think that was happening? I think, uh, I think uh, uh, the way I put it is that we all like power in this country. And when you have a man who is very powerful, or powerful people, uh, when they express certain intentions that they won't like this man, um, I'm, I'm sorry to say that the attitudes of people can simply change. They can s change so dramatically. So, permit me to ask yes. you, are you saying, am I correct in assuming that you're saying that, that somebody very powerful in this country was fearful of the fact of the fact that you would not be amenable enough and therefore expressed his or indicated that he wouldn't be very happy if you became a judge is that what you're saying uh, of course i'm not amenable that is well known it's no secret at all it's no secret as a lawyer i was never amenable i find it completely laughable that uh, uh, that people are making stupid accusations uh, somebody who was not amenable even when he was Solicitor General with his own government. And therefore you believe that that powerful person indicated that you, he wouldn't be very happy with the fact. I think, uh, I think this back channeling did happen with the judiciary. And who? I, I, I have no idea. I don't know the name of the person. <coughs> but I did find it very intriguing that the back channeling happened very soon after uh, the election results were announced and I discovered this in the course of a chance conversation with uh, a chance conversation we leave it with X but uh, that they could be trouble with my name but even then you know being somewhat naive uh, to be very honest with you 
um, and not uh, wanting to impute motives to anybody, I believe that uh, this must not be very serious and so on and so forth. But it was only when I saw these articles on the 11th and the 12th, it became serious. And, and I, 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 I took the trouble of speaking to the learned Chief Justice who had invited me. He has been very kind to me. It's a debt of honor which I wish to pay in the public. I can never repay the, the debt of honor and dignity with which he treated me. And on the 12th he said, please enjoy your vacation and we'll, we'll take care of the rest. I mean, just don't worry. And I realized that these might be just some speculative newspaper reporting and of no great consequence. Uh, then I found again that this was sort of coming in at uh, repeated intervals. Then came IB. Now, when you start using this word IB, CBI, it looks you're a, you're a very, very, uh, what do you call, a very a man of doubtful integrity. It's quite possible that you have, you know, what do you call some anti-national properties uh, and so on. Now, this is completely wrong. Uh, I, I started then smelling that something is going on in this. You, something was going on. You, you believe, was it at the level of the law minister or you believe it was higher up? Well, to be very fair to this law minister, Ravi Shankar Prasad, I've known him. Uh, he's a colleague ma of mine, a friend of mine. He will never do anyone harm. I, I, I have that belief in me. Uh, Arun Jetli and I, we have come to the, we, we, we're from the same school. Uh, he has always been like an elder brother to me. I never will think of him doing any harm. I don't know, you know I mean, I know, I, I know Mrs. Sushma Smaraj never Okay, so let harm. me ask you a So I, I don't know. So well, let me ask yes. you a pointed question. Yes, Do you yes. think then it came from the office of the Prime Minister or somebody close to him? Well, uh, as far as the Prime Minister is concerned, I have no evidence to say this at all because once in my life for about five minutes when I was Solicitor General of India and he was very charming and polite, I, I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. And that's Somebody all. close to him? Uh, it, it's a guess. So it's the reason I ask you is because in your letter you've mentioned the fact, you've mentioned the Sorabuddin case and your involvement. I am dealing with this on the basis of all the all this, uh, shall I say, gibberish, which has appeared in the newspapers. And, uh, uh, of course, I must also tell you that some people very high up in the government uh, did tell me that uh, there is a problem uh, and that it, it is the Sorabuddin case. But I still didn't believe it because, you know, you like to believe the best in people. You don't want to think do of you, the worst. Do, would you, are you now prepared to say in hindsight, uh, you know, one is always wiser in hindsight. Of course. That perhaps, you know, the, the vigor with which you pursued that case, maybe that would have earned the displeasure of some, some very powerful people. In this case, perhaps Mr. Amit Shah, who everybody knows is, uh, enjoys the conference of the Prime Minister. Well, let me put it like this. I have absolutely no apology to offer for the way I conducted myself as an amicus curiae in the Surabuddin case. The simple reason being that that's a case where human life is being taken, uh, snuffed out without authority of law by actors of the state. So my question was, do you yes. believe... Uh, the, the issue was that was I over aggressive, if that was your question? The answer is I was my normal self as an amicus curiae. But an amicus curiae sometimes may have to be indignant if he thinks that the demands of justice require... And do you think that may have rubbed some people off in this particular case, Mr. Amit Shah, the wrong way, and perhaps uh, you're now paying the price for that? Well, if I am paying a price for what I did as amicus curiae, it is a lovely price to pay. I want to say this openly. If for doing the right thing in Surabuddin's case, if this is a price which I need to pay, I will pay it 150 times over and over and again. That's my level of confidence and conviction. But I also want to say that I never targeted Mr. Shah because I don't know anything about him. And look, I'm not a personalized lawyer. This is something which people who have known me as a professional person will vouchsafe for. I'm an issue-based lawyer. I think of issues, principles, and the actors or human beings come at the end of the road. And really, I never said anything against, for instance, like newspaper in Hindu, it was reported, oh, he targeted Nari. 
I never said a word against him. And uh, I then realized that the way in which you argue a case, the way it is reported by people who are standing at the back immediately, can be somewhat drastically different. And you know, this used to happen with me uh, some time ago when I was at, uh, when I was assisting a commission of inquiry a few years ago into the uh, Tehelka tapes. Uh, they, whatever I argued, which was genuinely, would be distorted some 15 times and alarm bells would be set. Oh, this man is actually wanting to do this. So it, uh, it brings me to do the next question, yes. which is that much has been made out of the fact uh, you know, there are some allegations, and there are only allegations, that you met with Mr. A. Raja, the 2G accused, that you, your name figures in the Radia tapes, mm. that, you, that you sought her help in, in seeking membership of a very prestigious club. Right. Let's go one by one. The first, I was Solicitor General in the Congress government, the UPA government. When I left the UPA government, the UPA government had the courtesy to put on record my outstanding services. I want to tell you, at that time the CBI was also a part of that setup. Second, as far as Mr. Raja is concerned, I have in fact written this to Mr. Kapilsip a little later. I, to, be, to be very honest with you, I couldn't believe that ministers could be corrupt. I must tell you, I was living in some sort of an idyllic world. But uh, nobody told me that this minister had to be put on watch, which is true. I met him only once. He came uh, to, with his secretary of the DOT to discuss some affidavit. That was all. I must also tell you that it is I who asked the officers of the CBI in a separate room in my study in that official bungalow that do you have anything against this minister? And the reason was this. And the reason why I was appearing for all parties was this. Not because I wanted to help any minister. No, not at all. Farthest from it. And in fact, let me tell you very honestly, ministers are were rather, rather very of ever having anything to do with me. That's the real truth. But having said it, I want to tell you that I didn't want a mistake to happen that someone is under suspicion and here am I, I am gungo defend, defending that action. That is why I wanted to know the truth. The officers of the CBI, look, the CBI, eh, and I feel very sad today, I have to say it publicly, I used to treat the CBI as my baby. And I wonder, did I deserve this? You, you feel you've now been done in by the CBI? Your baby? Uh, nobody can do me in. That's, uh, that's, that I'm very confident about. So what about the Radia tapes? But, but, but I wish you to know that the CBI, director after director, important cases, I always stood by them. I won the extradition case of Abu Saleh. You asked me about Radia tapes. Who gave the Radia tapes to the Supreme Court? This Solicitor General. I tendered them. I am the person who told the court, investigate every allegation into it. Don't you think I had some guts? Of course I did. And do you know something else? Later, I had no idea at all. Uh, later, it is after I have retired, I have resigned as Solicitor General, etc. I read in the newspaper about some swimming pool membership offered to a top law officer. The facts are these. I used to go to Thalkatora pool. It was an all-weather pool. Then it had got closed down due to maintenance and so on. I am a patient of a bit of hyperthyroidism, so you need some exercise to keep your weight under control. And I used to work terribly long hours as Solicitor General, 17, at least about 18 hours a day, 18, 19 hours a day. So I was told to swim. So I asked one of my friends, Parak Tripathi, outstanding, do you, that please, Parak, can you just look around for a swimming pool nearby so that I can swim? I need exercise. I mean, very genuinely, lovingly, he spoke to somebody in the Tatars or whatever to know whether I could get membership of the Taj Mansing swimming pool. The Taj Mansing people rang up my office, told my clerk that the membership forms would be available and I can go fill up, you know, a few formalities like doctor's certificate, blah, blah, blah. Then I asked, what's the price of the membership? Because 
you have to use not only the pool, but you know, that's about three lakhs odd. But uh, then, uh, incidentally, a thought also struck me, look, I'm SJ, I don't know, going to a five-star pool. Well, I was so inundated with work, I never became a member at all. This is now reported by the CBI to the Supreme Court in a seal cover. Now, I wonder what is the sense of truth which is being practiced by any government which talks about dharma as its main plank while dealing with individuals. This is allegation two. Let's go one by three. I heard this IAB report. IAB? Oh my God, is it IAB? Again, IAB. 30 years, government after government. And, and I tell you, I feel sad. How well I was regarded in the NDA government? Minister, the degree of respect with which I was treated, to even in matters relating to the IB. So I found it odd that IB would give any report. And incidentally, on 15th of May, there's a completely clean chit. The file is ready for signature. Prime Minister Manmohan Singh backs out because there's going to be a new government. I understand that. I respect that. But do you mean to say on the 15th I'm a great clean man? And suddenly, post a new government, they find me odd. They, they find my behavior odd. Yes, I, no. yes. And now let's take the odd behavior part. The odd behavior. They say you, were, you relied a lot more on spirituality. You were, you were more spiritual and less rational in your... Well, 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 well. First of all, I question the locus tandai of the IB to make any personal comments about my religious beliefs. It's none of their business. And if the Supreme Court of India wishes that state agencies can talk about personal beliefs of any individual, I'm very sorry. Then let's call it a banana republic. I can be an atheist tomorrow. Do you mean to say, because I'm an atheist, I'm not qualified to be a judge? Let's take the case of spiritual. What is the material they used? They used the material which I have written about a temple where I was appointed as an amicus curiae, and because I was familiar with the subject matter, it's a pure accident of birth, pure accident of studies, and they pick up that report, they take phrases out of context. In fact, Intelligence Bureau reading Padmanabha Swami Temple report, I think they've done it for the first time in their lives. Good luck to them. But I think they were not qualified even to understand that report. They should have sent it to somebody like Murli Manohar Joshi, who knows the subject. Please ask him to read the report. Two, they said, he owed behavior. I am old. I'm not, I'm not a conformist. Let me tell you, for instance, I did parliament attack case. They said, you know, parliament attack case, he went yes, there. Yes, there's a reference to the fact that you visited parliament. Yes, that and now, hold on. Now, why did I visit parliament? Uh, I visited parliament not to become a parliamentarian. I visited Parliament because I wanted to know the exact spot where the ambassador car was parked. I wanted to know where was the firing done. I wanted to know which was the last step where Hamza, one of the terrorists, was about to enter and barge into the doors of Parliament. But at the same time, since the matter involved a loss of a few lives who were martyrs for the nation, I have some respect for people who have given up their lives. So I wore a national dress, and if wearing a national dress is so irksome to this government, they better publish it clearly. I wore a dhoti and a kutta, I carried some rose petals, I put it there, and I just did namaste and maintained two minutes of silence. Is this very suspicious conduct? Is this so odd a behavior that a man must be trashed around in public? And is this a behavior which warrants, shall I say, a large-scale piece in the economic times? And if this is the standard of pursuing people with character, I'm very sorry to say, I don't want to be a part of any court. The very fact that this kind of behavior, this kind of, shall I say, maligning people, is tolerated by the judiciary, for a man who is about to become its judge, he doesn't speak well of the judiciary at all. You feel let down by your colleagues in the... Very mildly put. You put it very mildly. And what do you propose to do about it? I, I don't need to do anything about it. I've withdrawn my consent. I've withdrawn my consent. And please understand, you go to an institution 
because the institution is also an insignia of honor. This is an institution which is meant to protect people against the incursion of their fundamental rights, against their religious freedoms, against atrocities which are committed by the state. Do you mean to say that I will enter an institution beginning with a sense of disrobement, dishonor in the public, being watched, laughed, gaffed at? Not at all. So I'm what, not interested in it. So what now? Will you, will you continue practicing? Do you intend to going back to the bar? Well, that's a very lovely question. I have so many interests. One great thing of out of my withdrawal is I have many, many interests. I'm not simply, uh, shall I say, a moribund lawyer. I have interests. I, I have interests in social work. I, I'm a trustee in many organizations. Uh, and do you know, I, would, I want to share this with you uh, in an interview. When I was very upset at all this going on, I went to Rishikesh to a to an institution where I'm a trustee. They run a home for lepers, for uh, destitute children, and for spastics. And you won't believe, when I hugged them, and I spent that day with them, I started crying. I said, what am I cribbing about, about this uh, media and all this? Look at these people, the sparkle of joy in their lives. I think I have so much unfinished work, positive work, so little time, I think, in retrospect, I may have to actually say, thank you, Mr. Government, because I have pled. All right, that's the former Solicitor General of India speaking exclusively to headlines today in that tell-all interview of furious Gopal Subramaniam expressing his disappointment in the NDA government. He says he no longer wants to be considered for the promotion to the Supreme Court judge post.